Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And in this video, we are doing the full review on the Civivi Badlands. we got a lot to get into, so let's get right into it. So the overall profile of this knife, I love. I love that it screams knife and it just has a lot of things in a knife that I really like to see especially in an EDC work knife or carry knife. One, it has a nice thin blade stock, 118 thousandths, and a nice drop point blade. And you see the thickness of the, you know, the blade stock thickness that stretches out all the way out to reinforce the tip. So it gives you an acute yet strong tip. Now, you see how it has the swedge right there. Now, that swedge is going to help you when cutting into stuff. When you cut into stuff, as you're passing through, the material can basically go around the knife. So as material goes up the blade, it'll go up and over this part. And it gives it a little gap from here to here so that it doesn't hang up. A lot of knives... You'll notice you'll get drag when, go, when, when cutting through something because the material binds up by the spine. That's what that helps prevent. Sorry, I changed the band-aid to make it a little more camera friendly. So, back to the blade. It's about 14 thousandths behind the edge, which is a great great thinness because of the coating it's going to be a little more difficult for me to get certain things to come up but if you really look you can see how thin the edge is right there by the choil now it is a nice deep hollow grind which is going to benefit you in sharpening you'll be able to continue to sharpen it through the life of the knife without it dramatically getting thicker and making it more difficult to cut so now making cuts with it it does cut very well going through materials it just blazes through materials and a lot of it has to do with the relationship of the handle and the blade that we'll get into here in a second but you can see how it just passes through materials very very nicely i mean just a great great cutter and because of the the neutral ergos it has it just really really benefits the cutting performance now with the, the utility cuts like i said that tip is a nice strong yet acute tip which helps with utility cuts you do have to lift it up a little bit because it does have a decent belly on it to to get to the tip but you can kind of use the the portion of the top of the belly and the tip at the same time which gives you nice good strength and power in your utility cuts now let's talk about the ergos because a lot of this has to do with why it cuts so good it has such a neutral grip you see the straight spine right there that is going to help lay across your palm when cutting so it can like sit nestled right there in your hand so when you're cutting you got a lot of power going across this entire handle of the knife instead of just being one little spot here or using this little bet this little ass or the the butt end of the knife which you got you know good leverage behind too so it's nice that it does have this little teardrop taper because it can benefit in pushing into your palm when making a cut down or the utility cuts because it kind of pushes into your palm because with this blade shape you you don't hit the utility cuts like that you actually have to lift up a little bit to get the utility cut so you need that little bit of a teardrop to, to push into but the thickness of the handle and the depth of the handle is really good for pinch cuts you know where you just pinch it and slice or you know push cuts and then you have the finger twirl which is really nice for real push cuts which works really good by the way i mean you can really get a good positive grip on this and because of that handle like i was saying it really really locks you in right there um love the neutral grip and then the finger placement doesn't give you a, pos a place to put your finger and what i mean is like and even though I feel like these knives have good ergos, 
but a knife like this where it gives you a couple different spots this is a hinder to put your fingers but those are the places you have to put your fingers or like say even something smaller like this that doesn't really give you a place to put your fingers back here so you have to use the choil in this knife you decide where you want your fingers you know you have the option to, to choke up right there but you can use it like this you can use it like this you can use it i mean just in any direction you want you know even if you want to make a sideways cut for whatever reason you can i mean it just doesn't doesn't poke you anywhere in the hand very very neutral love it let's talk about this action so it's a civivi and if you know Civivi knives, Civivis have amazing action. The, the flipper tab is held really high. It has good jimping all the way around it. And because of that type of jimping, it's a, a kind of a sharp jimping. And because of the height of the flipper tab, it's above the center of the pivot. It has a lot of leverage in the deployment. It's mostly a light switch in my opinion, but you can push button it. It's just a little difficult to do like a, a conventional push button. And I don't mean difficult like in a bad way, but it's kind of angled down the way it's cut out. If you can see here, it's black so it's hard to see with my background, but it's gonna want to push downward so it's kind of an in-between. It's not like a, a typical push button. It's kind of like a push button and down. Like a straight push button would be something like th this where this is the Ferrum Forge Pro Prolic where the jimping straight behind it and you just push it straight in. This one, the jimping is kind of on top and it's rounded so it does give you kind of the option to do both but it's mostly a a pull down light switch type but you can push button it now the thumb studs they're pretty close to the frame but if you come from underneath you can absolutely get to them and it rockets out really good for the reverse flick it works pretty good because that's kind of where your finger lands anyways when you go to do a reverse flick But the action from the thumb studs works great, and so does the flipper tab. Civivi, man. Civivi just, they have their detents so tuned in that it just works. Now, for the slow roll, you can just grip it and go. The detent's not too strong to where when you pop it out, it goes ahead of you. It doesn't do that. You have full control over it the whole time. And then the, the lock bar is very easy to get to as well. Detent nice and early. So if you wanted to unlock it and let the flipper tab right here hit your thumb, you can do that. So nice. It's good for fidgeting, I guess you could say. That was my fault. Or you can just unlock and do the push forward where you just push it forward right to your thumb. Then drop. Or you can... Just slap it shut with your finger. Now, if you do hit the detent, it's not a problem. You can just push through it. But sometimes, it, you know, other knives might hang up right there. But the action on this thing is great. Now, the FRN handle does have some grippiness to it. That, you know, you can feel a little bit. It does add a little bit of texture to your hand. So, it does wind up working out really good. T8s all the way around. Love to see that. Reversible pocket clip pocket clip works really good it's kind of their new style we'll look at one of their old styles here um like this is kind of their their old style clip i don't know if they're still using it on some of their knives they might still be using it on these knives but i mean with their newer models but the the new ones have a little bit higher of a ramp you see this one has flat screws good job love to see that and the clip is inset See this, how it has like a little lip inset? Now, it's not all the way deep, but that's good enough for me, man. I'm happy to see that. Um, instead of just going right on top of the, the scale like this one, they used flat screws, 
but then they didn't inset it in. They just put it right on top. This one works great, but it's always nice when they inset it in like that. Now one that has both all the way would be like this. See how there's nothing protruding underneath the clip? Flat screws and it's all the way inset. This is that pro, pro look again. The other knife I showed was the Civivi Elementum. We'll do some size comparisons here in a second. But the clip works good in the hand. You know, it's uh, I do feel it being a deep carry clip, and since it has a pretty tall ramp right there, you're gonna feel it. It's just the nature of the beast of the deep carry clip, at least on this knife. Choked up, it's good because I'm hitting this ramp right there, so it feels really good like that or like this. But when I'm back here like this, yes, I do feel it pretty good, but it's a knife with a clip, so I, I'm willing to, to take that. Let's talk really quick about sharpening it and why it's so... I did not sharpen it, just so you guys know, but I'm going to talk about why it's so easy to sharpen and how I can tell versus another knife. So, and then we'll get to the good and bad. So, if you look at it, when I put my edge and concentrate right here, when I put the edge to the stone, you see there's nothing in the way right here. It goes right to the edge, and I can slide my edge across the stone without no, nothing in the way. And I can go all the way over so that I get my entire edge. Now, with another knife, um, this one's review is coming up soon. You see how this flipper tab's hitting? I'm, you know, there's, it's, I can hit the edge, but now. I can't go any farther, and if I did go any farther, if it was possible, you have the, the, the choil, or sorry, the plunge grind right there. So it's possible that I might hit my plunge grind, because going past, you see how far I can get in with this edge? And look at the corner of the stone right here. You see where that lands? Now that on the other knife would be hitting the plunge grind. So in this case, it leaves you a good sharpening choil slash finger choil and a good plunge grind distance from the edge or the plunge grind distance from the edge is very nice. So this is going to be a knife that's very easy to sharpen. The Civivi has good grinds on their knives. So not only is the... The plunge grind and uh, the grind itself easy to sharpen. It's nice and thin, so it'll sharpen fast. And the blade shape is just an easy blade shape. You go across the stone, and when you get to the belly, you start lifting till you hit the tip. Repeat. And you can go back and forth if you're able to hold your angle good. You know, when you pay $40, you can kind of forgive things here and there. When you're paying $100 for a knife, I feel like there's certain things that should not be missed. There's certain things that I shouldn't have to ignore or they, they should make sure they hit. And they hit so many things across the board with this knife for under $40. Let's talk about some bad to me. I'm not that happy with the FRN. In my opinion, at $40, we should be able to get G10. They have other knives, like from their Sun Cut line, that are basically the same thing with G10. They should be able to hit it on this part. They have other knives in the same price category with Micarta. So why are we doing FRN? I don't know. Get rid of the FRN, G10. FRN shouldn't even belong on a Civivi, Sencut, etc. I think it's more for $10, $15 knives, especially in 2021. Next up, on another bad thing, and this, you know, isn't that big of a deal. This is 100% a nitpick. You know, the flipper tab's a little, a little pokey, just a little bit. It's a little bit pokey. Um, it's not a big deal. Like I said, this is just a 100% nitpick. And Civivi does knives so good that I feel like I could nitpick them. Because <laughs> we expect such good job from them. Nice and centered. Next thing, I didn't see any knives of this or like this with satin blades. I'd like to see it in satin. These coated blades, 
a lot of people don't like coated blades. And one reason why is like I only cut with it a little bit and I'm already getting wear from the etching. Let's see if I can get it to show up. Just, it's very minor right now, but I haven't really honestly cut too crazy with it. But it's getting wear up by the spine. My camera's not picking it up, but in person, I can see scuffs right there on both sides of my knife. So, the, and with the little use now, I if I use this for a month straight cutting with it, this coating is going to be all messed up. It's just going to be. They should provide you either a a set a choice um now maybe they will in the future and this is just the first drops but i haven't seen any with satin blades i would like to see them with satin blades but for the most part the coating is going to be somewhat okay but it's going to show where it's going to be the type of knife that you're going to want your to see love marks and what i mean by that is some knives just when you use them over time, they show wear, and some people like that. So if you're the type of person that loves the wear on your knife, then it might be right up your alley. But if you despise a knife that looks like it's been scratched and used, this might not be your cup of tea. Um, other than that, the one other or there's another thing. The thumb studs are close to the scale. I can easily get to them, so I don't want to make it seem like it's that big of a deal. But like, let's look at the the sun cut um, actium. Look at how far away it is from the G10. I can get to it so quickly. I mean, it's just bang right there, right where my thumb lands. This one, I, I tend to slide up and off. I, I do this a lot with this. And then I catch it. So I, I've gotten, you know, I've learned to go right up underneath and get it. But it's just, it is slippery and it's not very tall. And the, there's grippiness on the thumb studs. But they're just so close to the frame. Next thing, and this is the final thing. Um, this thing's all the way tightened down and... I mean, I can, it's not that I'm really getting much play. It's more flex than anything else. I think of a lot of it's to do with the FRN. If it was G10, I don't think this would be happening, but you can hear it. And it's, see if you can see it. I mean, the whole knife is bending because one, this flexes. Now, I'm not saying it's going to break. This is a very tough knife. It will be fine. But when you try to check for blade play, you can't help but get flex. So it makes it like it's hard to check for blade play. I constantly feel like I have blade play in my pivot because it flexes so much in the pivot area. Like literally, I feel like I could just snap this knife right in half right now. So, but I know it's not a hard use knife and I'm not trying to make it seem like it is. You could definitely be very tough on this knife with no problems, but you know, it's just, you know, you feel that flex in the pivot. Now I wouldn't mind that so much if it was a micro thin blade or anything like that, but this is a full size knife with a, a decent thickness. You know, it's almost a hundred, I think it's 118 thousandths. I forget what I said earlier, but you know, I don't know. I just I just wish it didn't have so much flex in the pivot area. I feel like it's going to break when I do that. I feel like I can break it very easily. Now, like I said, it's not that big of a deal. It is a lightweight knife. And that's probably why they used the FRN because they were trying to hit that lightweight market. But the G10 would not have made it that much heavier and it would have only made it stronger. Now, some of that flex might have to do with all this milling in here too. You know, when you get all that milling in there like that and you mill out all these pockets, yes, it brings down the weight, but it also brings down the strength. So the overall length of the knife is seven and a half inches with a three and a quarter inch blade. Here is the Sencut Actium, which is a bit longer. And then here's the Civivi Elementum, a bit smaller. Now, a really good size comparison is the Benchmade Bugout. They are the exact same length, pretty much. I mean, they're just about exact. And then here's the Benchmade 940, which is a touch longer than 
the Civivi. I also forgot to show that it does have a lanyard. It's just a hidden lanyard through the, you know, a pin in the back, which is really cool. I like how they hit it nice and ba nice back there where it's not uh, right here on the side showing a hole. I like how they did that. Um, the stop pin is a decent size for the blade and for the knife. I always like to see big stop pins. This one's not big, but it's also not extra tiny. So, happy about that. So, all in all, I like the knife. The knife's action is really good. Um, the, the cutting performance is really good. It's comfortable in the hands for the most part. Great in the pocket. Good EDC knife. Nice big hardware. And it's going to take an edge very easily quickly and over and over they gave you a lot of life on the on this knife and they made it possible to continuously sharpen through time so i do like the knife and i think it's well worth the 40 dollars or 39.99 i love you guys thank you guys for watching peace